what you are about to watch is a very important process that happens during cell division which is separation of chromosomes the chromosomes align along the center of the cell during metaphase and then they are pulled to the opposite ends by spindle fibers during the anaphase the separation process is also termed as disjunction this process is so important that when non disjunction occurs it can lead to diseases like down syndrome Downs is due to the non-disjunction of 21st chromosome during the gamete formation. Trisomy means that there are three copies of the chromosome 21 instead of the normal two copies. Downs is a disease that is associated with developmental delays, intellectual disability, and distinct physical features. But what controls these spindle fibers? There is this organelle called as the centrosome. So in this video, we are going to learn more about centrosomes. So centrosomes are known as one of the main microtubule organizing centers, meaning it organizes microtubules in a specific manner so that it can perform a specific function. In another video on cilia and flagella, we saw about basal body, which is another microtubule organizing center. Centrosome contains two cylindrical structures, which are called as the centrioles. Both the centrioles in a centrosome lie perpendicular to each other. They are surrounded by pericentriolar material and you have microtubules projecting from this structure. One of these centrioles is designated as the mother centriole and the other is designated as the daughter centriole. They are made up of centriolar microtubules. These centrioles develop during multiple rounds of cell division. It is said that the older mother centriole is formed at least 1.5 generations earlier than the younger daughter centriole. And the daughter centrioles are usually formed during the synthetic phase of the cell cycle. These two serve as the template based on which new centrioles are formed during cell division. So how do we differentiate the mother centriole from the daughter centriole? Well, mother centrioles are decorated with distal appendages as well as subdistal appendages. These are structures which help the centrosome to anchor themselves within the cell during cell division. Anchoring gives more stability to the overall structure. The mother and the daughter centrioles are connected by interconnecting fibers. The pericentriolar material is a cloud-like substance that is made up of proteins and it wraps around these two tube-shaped centrioles. The protein cloud is made up of subunits of microtubules like alpha and beta tubulin and other proteins that are required to develop microtubules. This protein cloud does not have a protective barrier around it. The cloud is made up of special proteins that work together to make sure the cell maintains its shape and can divide properly when needed. The microtubules extend outwards from the pericentriolar material with one end embedded within the cloud and their growing ends are usually extended into the cytoplasm. So what exactly is the structure of the centriole? Let's take a look. So when you cut through and look at a cross section of it, they are very similar to cilia and flagella in that they are made up of ringed structures made up of microtubule. But unlike cilia and flagella, um, centriole is made up of a triplet structure. And there are nine of these triplet structures. They are evenly spaced on the peripheral region. The microtubules are made up of the tubulin protein. There are no central rings in case of a centriole. If we were to name the microtubule triplet, this is how we would do it. These triplets are linked to each other by means of an AC linker. There are no central rings in case of a centriole. Instead, the center is hollow, but it is also proteinaceous and it is called as the central hub. The central hub is connected to the microtubules by means of radial spokes, and these are made of proteins as well. At the end of the spokes, you see a structure which is called as the pinhead. It is the meeting spot between the triplet and the spokes. Now, during cell division, we have our mother and daughter centrioles. Let's designate them as M and D for ease. So what happens is that the connecting fibers between them, which is usually tightly linked, becomes a little bit loose. This helps in the subsequent steps that are about to happen. So what happens is that the mother and the daughter each serve as the template and replicate themselves. So here we have our original mother and daughter centrioles, and these are the newly created ones. So now we can designate them as M1, M2, D1, D2. You would notice that the previously daughter centriole is currently the new mother centriole. So after the replication process and the new daughter centrioles have reached maturity, 
the interconnecting fibers are formed between the mother and the daughter centrioles like before. Now the pair slowly starts acquiring the pericentriolar material between them. And at some point, they start separating from each other. They also divide the pericentriolar material between them, so they start to look like this. As they are separating from each other, they start developing microtubules that project out into the cytoplasm. So what happens is that each of the centrioles move to opposite poles and the spindle fibers start forming between them. So usually the chromosomes would be arranged somewhere over here. At the end of cell division, each centriole moves into one daughter cell. And during the next round of cell division, the process starts from first.